These here are the last two power supplies I constructed. Both very simple and both very reliable. This one here is constructed for my Newman motor experiments and various other high voltage games. Um, it produces um, a bit over 100 milliamps, a couple of hundred milliamps, short circuit. Um, I've just made a few adjustments to it to raise the voltage and lower the current ever so slightly, but basically it produces about 1000 volts at 200 milliamps. And very good. This one next to it is your ubiquitous 30 volt lab power supply. It does that at about 20 amps. Um, and now I've needed one to charge my e-bike. I need a third power supply. I need a 60 volt one. And they're quite expensive. So as you can see, it's in its early stages. What I've done is taken two microwave oven transformers, a bit of circuitry. What I've done with the transformers is removed the secondaries and put on about 30 turns of uh, thick gauge wire. Now they produce about 35 volts each rectified. This here is an LM723 voltage regulator. I've got two of them lined up, but only one's currently hooked up and working. So only a couple of components in it. We have one potentiometer for the voltage limiter and another one for the current limiter. And then that directly drives a transistor in a H-bridge arrangement just to boost the base current. So two transistors. And the output of those goes through a resistor and into the load. The reason for the resistor is because the chip measures the voltage on either side of the resistor and it uses that to determine how much current is going through the circuit thereby it gives its ability to limit the current with the potentiometers very simple this is the circuit here it didn't actually work very well initially I had to make a few adjustments to it but that's no problem at all um, and it does work up to about 45 volts, or actually technically speaking, about 48 volts. Uh, so what I've done is connected two of them. Uh, two of them up, they'll be running in. Uh, they'll be running in series. So the outputs will simply be placed to a capacitor each. So I've got basically two um, two capacitors charged to about 35 volts. 34 volts um, and I'm using dual gain pots over here so I can only so I only have to use one pot to adjust the voltage limit and current limit for both however I'm using two pots here because I didn't have any 1k dual gangs but they shall arrive shortly so you might want to have a fiddle with it the capacitor I've got the capacitors I have are a little too large so the um, it takes a, it takes a few seconds for the um, on low loads like these lamps. It takes a few seconds for the changes to catch up. Like the potentiometer just lags a little bit, um, and that's the voltage limiter over there. Same deal. Um, it's really very good. Um, transistor is getting a little warm. It's probably 60 degrees, um, but as you can see, there's very little load on it. Um, these transistors are good for a short circuit current of about 20 amps. Um, and naturally there will be two of them. So yeah, I'm looking at um, total output of about 70 volts um, at give or take 15 amps. So I should do the job nicely to charge the electric bike. This is currently my microphone. I've added a BNC adapter or rather an RCA adapter to the top of my camera and um, yeah hopefully a better quality microphone will come soon this one was inside the camera but um, yeah it's done its dash and there's another lens coming as well so I probably won't look quite so silly in widescreen anyway you'll see in the update at the end of this video when this power supply is finished 
Okay, a few quick adjustments I've made here. We now have two capacitors wired in series. As you can see, I've now doubled the channels and both of these LM723s are now connected. So what I have is an on switch, give it a kick. So, these three automotive globes are wired in series, so that's one set of 36 volts. And they are running off one of the capacitors. And then the capacitors are wired in series. So what I have is this 240 volt globe running off both the capacitors, so that's running off 70 volts. And that was the purpose of this experiment, to determine if these 10 cent regulators, which is the entire basis for this 15 kilo power supply I've just constructed, one that will replace one that's worth three or four hundred dollars on the internet and probably be more reliable and last longer. So, what I've got here is determined that the two 1K pots are actually the voltage adjustment, so they both turn up maximum. So if I drop this down to zero and back up to full, down and back up, you'll notice, of course, that the back lights are dimming considerably, but more relevantly, the one that goes across both capacitors, the 240 volt globe is still lit, whilst the 12 volt ones are off. I'm going to turn that back up again. So that's obviously the voltage adjust for the capacitor of the two, which is powering those globes. So let's see what the other voltage adjust does. That's only pulling down the other series capacitor. There we go. And it can't go below that level of brightness because obviously it's from the other series cap. So I'm going to max that out again. And this one is the dual gang current adjustment, which I can't get that in shot, so I'm just going to turn it down anyway. And we've got a fairly linear response across the board. They all go out and they all come back at about the same rate. So, this system is working very well. I've replaced the secondary transistors of the Darlington pair with the same. So we've got uh, one identical transistor boosting the current to the primary transistor and these are both C 3998. These are the transistors I use in basically all of my circuits, almost all, at least all the main driving ones because they're rated to 1500 volts and they cost about $1.10 each. Um, and I did have some IRF 840s on here, but it actually operates much nicely and much more smoothly with just two of those, so I really couldn't care less about the extra 50 cents. Um, one note I would tell you about building one of these, which is probably not really relevant to you, but don't rivet down any of the plates. I riveted some, um, some old washing machine steel on the top and the whole thing rattled so loudly it was absolutely incredible. It was like running an angle grinder at night. It would seriously wake up the neighbours just from the rattle from the transformers having the steel riveted down. It's an incredible vibration from those transformers. Um, and then one other problem is that I don't actually have it plugged in right now so I can't show you, but the base load power, i.e. when I turned it on and it wasn't drawing anything, um, was about 110 watts for two microwave transformers. So it's going to use 100 watts no matter what you're doing with it. Um, so yeah, not very efficient. But, um, but like all my other power supplies, at least all the ones I've built, um, it should be pretty well indestructible. I want to make a few resistor adjustments to the current adjusting variable resistor. So to set the current limit, so it can't, it basically can't go beyond 15 amps. So I'll set up a load tomorrow and make sure the, um, the current limiter um, isn't straying up to the max of the, because the transformers can probably put out 
40 or 50 amps. Um, so I'll make sure the current limit is set down to a sensible maximum um, just by changing the resistor value. Um, then it's really good to go. Game on. I'll stick these two heat things back in there. Um, and that will do a great job charging my e-bike. Um, and then back to my fun projects. The motors, the power themselves. They're really my favourite. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Um, great way to stay the quiz. Okay, a few final adjustments. That's what the circuit board ended up looking like. Not too bad, came out pretty neat, but then again, there's only half a dozen components on it, so it's really very easy. So, still running two microwave power supplies, rewound 25 volts or so a piece. I made a few changes to the uh, power boards. They now have uh, two transistors per channel on each of the two heat sinks. Um, they're happily delivering about 12, 13 amps. Um, and I haven't got another pot yet, another dual gain pot, so there's the voltage one. That's really no problem. That works fine. Um, I've got to wait for another dual gain pot to handle both the current. Um, now this circuit, the LM723, it does voltage regulation really well and the current regulation works fantastic as well. Um, one notable issue is though, when you turn the voltage way down, if you're only powering 5 volts out of a 60 volt power supply, then that voltage is being dissipated by these heat sinks. So you don't want to run really high currents and really low voltages because it will warm up pretty quick. Um, and although the current limiting um, is very good, it's not technically short circuit protected um, because each channel has two 15 watt resistors on it that are that come out to in parallel. They come out to half a watt, so you're never putting a short circuit across the transistors, which is good. So there's always going to be half of half an ohm. So there's always going to be half an ohm of resistance across there, so that's absolutely fine. You can, you can short that out all day long, it'll be no problem. Um, but as long as you only do it for a second or two at a time, um, because that'll be pumping, well, nearly 15 amps um, through at, you know, zero volts. That's going to get hot extremely, extremely fast. Um, this power supply is really happier at its top setting. Um, but yeah, that's really all you've got to consider. It's not so much a short circuit protection, um, although it does handle <coughs> very brief short circuits. And the current and the voltage regulation are both fantastic. Uh, what I've done here, um, until I come up with a better solution uh, for short circuit protection, I've just added the third pole um, between which I'm going to add an off-the-shelf um, short circuit protector, just like a, um, a home safety switch out of a meter box. Either that or I can just wrap some fuse wire around there, because I'm pretty keen to use it straight away, so I'm sort of rushing the finite um, the finer elements. Um, it did still turn out to be quite loud though, but um, not too bad. It's not really annoying. Um, Well, not yet anyway, I haven't really used it. It could be, but actually it, it's perfectly accessible, it really is. So uh, yeah, that's it, very happy with it. Um, that'll be the last video on this one. So I'll string that together into 10 minutes and stick the circuit diagram with it. Um, this is a great, really simple power supply. You can make for $5 of components, provided you have um, all the excess scrap standing by. So yeah, really, really, really fantastic. Okay, hope you make use of it. Good night. And I did also want to mention the reason for this power supply is to 
charge the batteries of my little testing e-bike it's a 36 volt kit but I have some X Toyota Prius batteries in there um, each one of these cells is NINH 1.2 volts per cell so 6 in each string so 6, 12, 18, 24, 32 um, and what I'm going to do is add a 4th, a, sorry a 6th row so yeah I'm going to need that extra voltage for my power supply and I'm going to put it into commission right now. Okay, good night.